Um, really enjoyed the presentation so far, uh, which have all been about the vision and what we might want. This is kind of how it was for us. Uh, I know Sam Peter from Google is here today, and uh, she presented here last year, setting out the Google Apps vision. Um, I work in the IT department at Leeds Met, so I'm from that end of the spectrum rather than the learning technologist end, but I'm not really a geek. Um, and, and so that's a little bit of context about, uh, about my presentation. I'm really trying to set it in the context of cloud computing as well. Uh, if I don't get defeated by the technology. So, um, you know, together the presentation, I was wondering, well, what is the one burning question that 300 delegates from all aspects of the spectrum of technology geeks on one side and learning technologists and academics on the other are going to be uh, thinking of when I'm standing here at 11.35 a.m.? And it's probably this. Is it still really a whole hour till lunchtime? Um, so, <coughs> thanks. Uh, which I'm trying to seg into the, to the presentation in a way, and I thought, well, yeah, that's not a bad, not, well, not a bad focus for me to make the presentation. But also, uh, lunchtime does come into it because uh, the end of the story here is that, is that Google Apps has worked really well for us. We're delighted with it. And it does mean that we actually get to take an occasional lunch break now instead of standing over a server fixing something. So, uh, so that's, that's the good news. And the presentation is really about how we got there, how it is for us now, and, and how we see the future, all in 15 minutes. So a little bit more context, Leeds Met University, uh, some of you will know, 30,000 students, 3,500 staff. Two main sites, City and Headley Campus, you can see the spaceship has landed on the left, that's our new uh, prestigious Rose Bowl building, absolutely fantastic state-of-the-art building. Um, grown year on year since the 90s, ex-Leeds Poly. Um, I've just been with the, with the uh, university six months, but I was the original project manager for implementing Google Apps as an independent consultant back into uh, early 2008. Um, possible title for the uh, presentation was Strategy Meets Serendipity. It'd be nice to, for me to stand up here and say, we have a grand IT strategy about how we're going to engage with cloud computing, how we're going to look at software as a service, how we're going to engage with the platform, how we're going to engage with the infrastructure. Um, but that would probably be over-egging it just very, very slightly. Um, truth is, we had a problem. We had a problem with student email. We had an old creaky email system, clunky user interface, very little space. Students weren't using it, staff weren't using it to c communicate with students, they were sending emails to their, G their, their Yahoo accounts, their Gmail accounts, their Microsoft accounts, etc. And we decided that wasn't a very good way of, of, of especially having official communications between staff and students. Um, we thought we had a solution, um, but when we put the business case together, we found that it was going to cost us uh, a million pounds over four years, was the figures we came up with. Um, that's when serendipity walked in the door in the shape of Sam Peter from Google and offers us, offered us the opportunity to become the first uh, UK um, university to take, uh, take Google Apps. Um, and we were delighted with that. That really cemented the high-level executive support. In all business cases, all presenters say you do need high-level executive support. It really did help us to have um, our dean of the faculty that uh, the IT department uh, works under uh, really on board with this. quickly run through the, some of the software as a service benefits for us. Some of this is recapping what's been, what's been said in the, uh, in the previous presentations. But this, this is really how, what the benefits were for us, rather than just selling it. We did like the idea of no capital expenditure. You know, we're an income-based uh, organization like, like, like other institutions. Um, and it's a lot easier for us, especially in, in these uh, strict financial times, to, to, to pay out of income. Flexible licensing as a service, not just uh, the software. Um, I know we're going to say, actually, Google Apps is for free, but, uh, but, but still, I the, think the you know, we, we, we've learned from the model that we do really like this notion of subscribing to a service. Been a bit cheeky here, and the techies will probably say, what do you mean you didn't do anything? There's no technical design or implementation. That's not really fair. There was a lot of uh, design around, around the interfaces, really ramping up to get Google Apps on board. And I'll talk about that a bit more in the next slide. But we didn't have to provision any servers, put them on the network. We didn't have to design a bespoke application and, and, and bring it into production, et cetera. So that was fantastic. It really speeded up the deployment for us. A um, little bit tongue-in-cheek, the next one. Uh, may have to uh, scrap that one from any video that our dean sees. Um, just thinking about the future, really, and are we, are, are we in effect, exporting our carbon emissions by, by using uh, software as a service? Um, how, how are we going to account for that in the future? These are the sort of discussions that we're going to just start to have in the university now, as we can see carbon compliance uh, come, coming in the next few years. 
Certainly it was easy to get in to Google Apps. Um, we don't know whether it's easy to get out yet. We've been assured it was, and that was sort of part of the engagement process. Hopefully we don't need to. Certainly don't feel we're going to need to for the next few years, but uh, the proof will be in the pudding if and when that ever comes to pass. So invite me back in another five years, and I'll, I'll, maybe I'll be telling a different story. We don't know. Um, but we're, we're happy, very happy at the moment. Um, again, technical staff uh, in IT won't like me putting this slide up. Easy, I'd probably been fairer to say straightforward. Um, but straightforward is a big word, doesn't it fit so easy on a PowerPoint slide? Um, and I'm not sure I can spell it anyway. Uh, but straightforward. I mean, it's bread and butter stuff. There's work to do there. But, it, but, it, but you know, if you've got a decent IT department, good people, it, 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 it's not rocket science. You can do it. Hearts and Minds, we put a lot of effort into Hearts and Minds, um, engaging with staff and students at all levels. A lot of academic concerns about taking Google Apps. Um, about the, sort of the ethics of it, the, the security of the data, all this sort of stuff, and maybe we'll have some questions around that later. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that in the next couple of slides. And then the contractual side, really, was, was in, in a sense the hardest and the most expensive uh, part of, of, of the engagement. I guess some of that was probably um, because for us and for our uh, legal firm, it was the first time we'd been down this route with software as a service, so there was a big learning curve for us. We might be a lot more confident next time we might be a lot more prepared as an institution to let things go. So when we're battling backwards and forwards with Google saying, we want instant access to your Arizona data centers any time of the day and night we want, and they say no, well, we know we, maybe we just have to accept that in the future, and I think maybe we would. So letting go and learning to let go and being confident is, is, is part of the story. So contractual side, more, more on our side are learning experiences to what made it hard and expensive rather than think on, on the provider side. So very briefly, what we did, um, we, we, we set up the domain, we provisioned 30,000 uh, email accounts, uh, built an IDM driver from a company called, um, using a company called Sulfur Software um, to, to help us do that, uh, and link that to our mail API. We created an individual Google Calendar for every student, a personalized calendar, so not just this module timetable, but a personalized calendar. That took 1,400 person hours over about three months. Um, very, very useful for students. Um, they love that. We conducted a 3,000 user pilot over about three months, so that was about 10% of the student population. Got tremendous satisfaction uh, levels, uh, results back from that, and, and it was really to give us the confidence to go ahead rather than we were expecting to find any particular technical problems. And the final one was a, was a real learning point for us. We, we decided, um, unlike some, some other institutions we'd visited, not to do any data transfer, transfer of mailboxes for students. We, um, we ran their existing, we gave them a, a three month period where they, where they had both accounts, and we said at the end of that, we're gonna take your old email account away. Of course, we, we, we kept it just in case they needed to. We don't, we don't really tell the students that we're really gonna keep the data forever, do we? Tell them it's gonna go and encourage them to swap it over. So all they had to do was send any emails they wanted to keep to themselves, they'd be sent out and they'd come back on the mail, mail relay into the new account. I don't think we had one issue over that. So we just kept it very, very simple for ourselves, gave ourselves as little work as possible to do, and it worked so smoothly. And uh, you know, we crossed our fingers a bit, but it was fantastic the way it, uh, it, went, it all went so smoothly. So one year on, yeah, we, yeah, we, we love Google Apps. Um, we've engaged further with Google. We've taken the, uh, the Postini uh, security product, and we've just signed up uh, for one of the initial partners for YouTube EDU. Uh, I've talked about very high student satisfaction levels. I think uh, the surveys we've done have got sort of 99.2% uh, of, of a decent sample, um, saying that they rated it uh, Google Apps good to excellent. Very low number of support requests, and the, the next slide actually just, sh just shows you a breakdown of the support requests we've had. And the final point, again, a fantastic learning point for us, acceptance of downtime. If our in-house university system, email system, had gone down for 10 minutes, the help desk would have been buzzing with complaints and phone calls. Google Apps goes down for half an hour. Not a sniff. Nobody cares. Accepted it. They're fantastic. So that's a, I'm sure there's some real interesting lessons to be learned there, and we still need to reflect a little bit more on that. But uh, that, was, that, was, that, was, that was nice. These other support requests we've had, uh, I, I, just got, so I just pasted this straight in from an email. This comes, our, our Google Apps is supported through our portal help desk, and they get all of the, this is most of the sort of student facing user type requests that come through. Um, and you can see that I mean, that's, that's a small number for us compared to the old email system. 
um, 393 around Google Apps, and a third of those, you can see about halfway down, are about making the, their students' calendar public. So we created a, an extra calendar for them. You can have multiple calendars in Google. Didn't allow them to delete it, so it's, it's not theirs. They can just see it. But, but they, what we didn't realize is that they would actually want everyone to see their own calendar. So the requests we've had are to, are to, are to make, that, uh, make that public, and we're going to automate that tool now so they can do that themselves. Uh, but apart from that, really very, very little. Very few issues there at all. So, what now? Um, so, as of today, we're, we've, we've, we've had Google Apps for a year, so we've had time to reflect on it, get used to having it. We're looking to integrate um, Google Apps more into our policies and procedures, so our acceptable use of IT, student email policy. And even now, um, talking to the, to the academic side about how, to, how we can use apps a little bit more to link into the pedagogical um, uh, the side of the, of the learning. We, we did do that early on, and there was a lot of resistance from academics. Um, we've seen a lot of a crossover with, with VLE, collaboration environments, VLEs, etc. Um, we thought, OK, we'll leave that to one side, and we'll come back and look at, look at it again, which we're starting to do now. And, uh, and of course, people are engaging with Google Apps and, and Google products outside of, outside, of, uh, outside of the official sort of area anyway. So, so a lot of staff are already using calendars, embedding them into web pages, setting up their own little apps domains using Google Groups. So they're, they're familiar, and they're becoming more and more comfortable with the technology. And I think um, we will see uh, there is a plethora of applications out there, as, uh, as Bill was referring to, and, and, and it's trying to find the right tool for the right job. And that's, that's, that, that's their job. It's our job to just tell, tell the academics what, what, what the technology can potentially do, but not to tell them how to use it. Um, but we think we'll use the apps more. Certainly wants to start looking at, uh, at the app engine and sort of stepping down from that software as a service to looking at the sort of software as a uh, cloud as a service to cloud as a, a, a platform. And um, we're committed, really, to, to, to looking at the Android platform, comparing that with the iPhone platform, um, and, and seeing which one's easier to use, easier to work with, and, and more functional, and, and meets our sort of equality and diversity uh, agenda most, uh, most fairly. So that's where, we, that's where we're going with Google. Um, done a lot of presentations about Google Apps and, and, and its features, and I didn't want to do that today, but I've just got one feature that I love, which is quick response codes. And, you know, hands up, any, anyone use quick response codes? A, good, a, a fair amount, and that's great. I mean, we don't, to be honest, we don't at the university at the moment, and I, I travelled, met on the train, another serendipi act of serendipity this morning, a colleague, my peer from the University of Leeds, uh, Jane Lord, and, and they've got someone uh, doing a lot of work on quick response codes, but for me, they're just like a fantastic... Uh, Fantastic opportunity and so so simple, and that's a that's a, a QR code as you can see for Photo Nine uh, itself, and that could be a printer cartridge is low, snap, or there's another printer cartridge in a student area. Uh, I want I want one of those, snap, I've got it. Uh, as a poster for an event, snap, I've got the URL for that. So easy to use, and that's that's all available within Google Apps through the Charts API. That's just one of hundreds of features, <laughs> really cool features of Google Apps. Um, so what happens now? So this is strictly IMHO, um, and off the record in a sense. What we're seeing in Leeds Met is, as I said, growth of niche software as a service. We're seeing users go out now directly to service providers. We're seeing them go out to, say, a design company who will then subcontract out a software as a service to something in the cloud, the hosting, etc. So we're facing those challenges that we faced sort of 15, 20 years ago when the PC came in, loss of control. And we really want to be a bit smarter this time and, 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 and manage that a lot better. And I know a couple of the previous speakers have, have alluded to this as well. So they're, they're deciding who they want to engage with, uh, the terms they want to engage, and they're just going and doing it. And we're finding out um, when the invoice comes through to us for some reason. Uh, we're sort of sending it back and saying, no, actually, you can pay for that. Thank you very much. So we haven't got the IT department involvement, but it's happening. You know, the pre there's a previous slide with someone crossing their arms. We can't stop it happening. What, what are we going to do about it? And that's the real challenge for us as an IT department. What next? In the next few years, we hope that um, shared services across the sector, uh, and Jessica really keen at backing these, um, will we'll give us some private clouds, data, uh, disaster recovery data centers in, in virtual data centers that the, that the um, just back to Manza. Uh, are talking about, you know, in the YH man is now talking about a virtual data center. I'm assuming that that will be sort of provisioned as, as a private cloud. And I think in two to three years' time, if we start engaging with that, that will give us the confidence then maybe to move on and use the public cloud for more critical applications in the future. But I think this is a, a stepped way of, and a very reasonable way of, of taking uh, our engagement with cloud forward. 
final thought, really. Um, we're doing a bit of informal scenario planning now, just trying to look ahead, maybe not quite as far as 2020, but um, changing role of the IT department. If, 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 if users are going to engage with these services, irrespective of, of the IT department, then, then what role does that leave us? Uh, and maybe, you know, I've said changing role. It's, it's always an additional role, isn't it, for an IT department? It's, nothing ever drops off the, cat, off, the, uh, off, the, off the edge of the table, but an additional role as a, maybe an accreditor, um, so we, we can say, well, we, you know, we, we've done the due diligence. The, our fear, as, as IT specialists, is, is that end users don't know what they don't know. We would like it so that end users do know what they don't know, and then they can come to us and we can do, do, do due diligence on these services, platforms, infrastructures that, that they're engaging with. And at least we can say, yeah, that, you know, we, we can give it your tick on that one, go and use that one, but don't use this one, we've got concerns about it. So maybe that's an additional role that the IT function will pick up in the future, and one that, that we're starting to certainly think at least met start thinking about now. Okay, so that's, that's, that's just about the end of the slide. Um, so summary of Google Apps for us, yeah, it, it, it was a fantastic experience for us, it has been a fantastic experience for us, uh, and continue, continues to be so. It's almost, in a sense, it's almost been too easy. It, it, it's gone in, it, it's running away in the background, you kind of don't notice it in a way. And that, the danger there is that you don't exploit and realize the full benefits of it. So I think we really do need to go back and, and look at it again and see, well, what else can we get out of this? You know, for the investment we've made, let's, see, let's, let's try and exploit the benefits of, uh, of the technology to the full. Um, what we've learned is, 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 is get in there and do it. Don't worry about developing a, a grand strategy for engaging with the cloud. Just go and dip in there with an uncritical app, a uh, utility type app, uh, if you haven't done it so far. Uh, and do it because if you don't, if it, it, as an IT and learning technologist, if we don't do it, the users are just going to go and do it anyway. We'll end up following them rather than leaving them. So it's best to get in there uh, and, and at least be up there with them. Um, if anyone wants a sanitised version of these slides, uh, I will make one available, obviously, uh, you know, via via Tim. Um, but otherwise, thanks very much. <laughs>